So it's so it's okay. Too, so if this As is all H. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Storage Switzerland is an analyst firm focused on the storage, virtualization, and cloud marketplaces. This is a series of ongoing videos or chalk talks that we're having uh, on various technologies affecting our industry. Today we're going to talk about sharing solid state storage. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Violin Memory Systems. So to share solid state storage, we really have three options today. Uh, we can put it into a legacy storage system. We uh, now have seen pure SSD or flash only uh, SSD systems come to market, uh, or we can use it in a memory array. Uh, so we'll talk about each one of these use cases and see which one makes the most sense. So of course we're going to have, if we're sharing, we're probably gonna have a series of servers and they'll probably be on some form of storage network. And then they'll be ask, accessing some sort of disk system. Okay? That disk system, uh, let's say, for example, it's a legacy storage system, which obviously most people have. Most of the, the traditional storage vendors had, have come out with the option to add solid state to their existing storage arrays. The way they did that is they used uh, a solid state disk, a, a flash memory card that looks just like a disk drive, and plug it into their existing shelves. The advantage of that is from a go-to-market strategy, they can deliver solid state disk very quickly. The downside is these systems weren't really designed to handle solid state storage. A disk has to rotate. The more, when it rotates, the uh, processor and everything inside the storage system has time to do other things. So there's latency built in. With flash, there's no rotation. You go directly to the data. All of a sudden, all that latency is gone, and we can get a storage system very, very busy in a very short period of time. So let's look at that. So we might have several tiers of hard drives, and then we will probably have maybe a tier or two of solid state storage. The, the problem, again, is, number one, th these were designed to hold big hard drives, not small flash memory, so we waste a lot of uh, density or space uh, in the configuration. The second problem is performance. Again, these, these systems were designed to manage uh, multiple uh, uh, hard drive uh, scenarios, not SSDs and hard drives. So there was, there's a big performance gap, and there's a problem with uh, how do I get data to that solid state. Initially, most legacy storage systems use something called static placement, or what we call static placement, where you manually decided what data needed to go to the solid state disk drives and copied it there. The problem with that is, number one, all data isn't active all the time. Different data gets active at different times. And number two, you have to manually manage that process. And this was particularly challenging in the legacy environment because the capacities that we were able to deliver here were relatively small. Uh, and, and so it, the amount you could copy was limited. Almost in response to that, we've seen now pure solid state storage systems where just like a legacy uh, environment, uh, these, these systems deliver uh, pure uh, uh, enterprise type features like snapshotting and thin provisioning and replication, uh, but they do it in a solid state only environment. Most of the ones that we've seen to date use deduplication to drive down the cost and make that storage more uh, cost effective to the user. Well, of course, deduplication, if you have a lot of redundant data, it, it can be very cost effective and, and save you a lot of money and be very efficient with the use of solid state. The problem is you have to have the right environment. What we typically see in, in primary storage is about a 5x to maybe 7x uh, gain in efficiency. Uh, but this again is technology that is 20 to maybe 30x more expensive. So the, the offset isn't quite there. And then secondly, I don't know if all storage, all data needs to be on flash. It, it, clearly there's some data that's perfectly fine on hard drives. So th there's a balancing act there. And then of course those features that I mentioned 
like thin provisioning and snapshots and replication all take overhead. It, it takes time from the processor to figure out what it's going to do. So to com combat that, what legacy storage systems have done is developed a technique called auto tiering where they'll take this uh, tier of HDD and tier of solid state and for you automatically move data back and forth. Uh, the problem with that is that's a lot of copying in and out and, number t and on solid state we're particularly concerned about uh, write cycle so we don't want to blow through that solid state write cycle too quickly. And then number two, that again takes time. That, that analysis process plus the amount of work it takes to copy it from the hard drive up to solid state and from the solid state back down to the hard drive, that takes uh, time and overhead. So again, we may not achieve total performance. There are a class of boxes out there uh, called memory array or memory appliances. And these are solid state storage only devices with very thin software, meaning they don't have some of the enterprise-ish features like thin provisioning and snapshots and replications, um, but they are designed really to give performance. And so as a result, they are focused solely on that task. They don't have the overhead of all the other systems, plus they have the performance capabilities typically to render all the performance capabilities out of the box. So their services tend to, like I said, not be focused on replication and thin provisioning and things like that, but focus much, much more on flash management. So making sure where leveling is handled correctly, making sure garbage collection is done efficiently, all those sort of features. Probably the most important feature, other than, of course, achieving maximum performance out of flash memory, is that these appliances are much more dense in their packaging, meaning they can take advantage of the fact that memory was never designed to go into a uh, hard drive form factor. It's more of a, a, a DIMM slot or a module. And so they can uh, fit a lot more capacity into a much, much smaller space. That lowers overall costs and, of course, uh, consumes less data center footprint as well. So that's, that's a really big feature. So the question you may ask yourself, though, is, OK, how do I use a memory array type of solution and still get my data services that I like. Because you might want snapshots and replication and maybe thin provisioning. So how do you get those features and still be able to use a memory array, array type of uh, unit? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. Uh, you can look at a prior video that we had on the storage hypervisor. And the these services can be provided in the virtualization layer at the hypervisor. Or you can buy a, essentially a, 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 an appliance that provides these features. Most of the time, we call that storage virtualization, and we would call that a storage virtualization appliance. The advantage of doing that is that now you can keep your legacy storage system and then be able to transparently move data back and forth between the two different tiers of storage, yet provide these services to both tiers. So it gives you really the best of both worlds. You get all the feature set you, you want, and you get the raw performance capability plus the density and pa in packaging that a memory array, array type of technology will provide. So that's, that's the, the big advantage there, is that you can do both, get the best of both worlds, and be uh, well situated. So we like, from a solid state approach, we like the idea of using a box specifically designed for this type of storage because of the performance demands or performance capabilities of solid state storage. We think nowadays the delta is too great between what a hard drive can do and what a memory array can do. And so you're better to have those in separate boxes with separate I.O. channels. And if you need the management capabilities, go ahead and get a virtualization appliance or virtualize at the hypervisor to uh, get those services. Thank you for tuning in. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Violin Memory Systems, for sponsoring this video. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Have a great day.